right you probably never heard of, never even seen. You're looking at straight at them right now. Now they kind of look a little similar actually. They both wear glasses. They both have about the same amount of hair. Uh, they're both smiling. They're both wearing a tie, okay? The guy on the right has a PhD in physics. The guy on the left, he never even graduated from college, all right? They're both hard workers. They both are very smart. But there's one big difference between the two of them. The guy on the right, he has $80 billion in assets. The guy on the left, you can, me, you can maybe see a line down there, but it's very tiny. That $80 billion is almost a million times more than the mean family wealth in the United States, which is around $80,000. So what does income inequality look like today? The top 1% own 35% of the wealth, and the top 20% own over 80% of the wealth. So clearly, there is wealth inequality. There's no doubt about that. But the other message is, that guy on the right and me, we're not that much different. It can't be due to our effort or our brains or anything to, that that couldn't be the reason why he has so much wealth. Okay, so what is it causes the wealth? Well, there are lots of reasons. All right, now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a model which will lead to wealth inequality but does not incorporate anything about any individual whatsoever. Okay, so before I get to what this graph means, I'm going to tell you about the model. It is so simple that you can actually run it on any computer. It's not like those climate models where you need tons and tons of computer code and lots and lots of scientific facts and equations to go in it. This is so simple that I'm gonna tell you right now how it works, okay? So what is an economy based on? An economy is basically a set of transactions. That's what happens. You buy things, you sell things, you work for people, you get wages. They're all economic transactions. And in every single one of those transactions, one of the economic agents wins a little and the other loses a little. It has to be, because we never can value any economic transaction exactly. So there's a winner and a loser. So what we do in our model is we have a bunch of economic agents. They're chosen completely at randomly. And then we take wealth from one and we give it to the other. But we do it completely randomly. Completely randomly. There's only one catch. The amount of wealth we give is a percentage of the poorer agent's wealth. That's it. And then we do this over and over again. So what do you think happens? Do we get a nice bell-shaped curve that we're all expecting? You know, with some medium wealth for everybody, and most people have very little, very few people have very little, and very few people have very much. Some kind of exponential distribution, where most people have little, and a few have a little more, and almost nobody has much more. Well, we're gonna see what happens. So here, we're gonna see two graphs. The top graph shows you, see that green line across? Those are the agents. We're gonna start out with 100, okay? And it says one on the axis. One stands for about $100,000, roughly the median wealth, uh, family wealth in the US. All right, down that, in that red circle is how many transactions have occurred. We won't need to look at that too much. The second graph below is the same kind of thing, except the agents are ranked according to their wealth. So the agents on the left are the wealthy ones. The agents on the right are the poor ones. And then in the bottom yellow corner there 
is the wealth of the poorest person in this economy. Okay? All right. You all set to see that what happens? Any guesses? Think about it. Think about it in your mind. What do you think will happen? I'm not going to ask any, any of you. All right. So let's see what happens. All right. What happens? There it goes. There you go. See that one guy in the middle? He's got most of the wealth. There's a few others that are still vying to try and get up there. All right. And if I ran it long enough, that guy in the middle would get everything. If you look at the bottom uh, right yellow uh, corner there in that little yellow text box, all you see her bunch is zeros. What that means is that the wealth of the poorest person is less than a penny. That's how bad it is. And all the wealth goes to one person. Okay? It's actually not too similar, dissimilar to what happens in the United States where the bottom 20% have no wealth whatsoever. They're in debt. All right? So, what does this mean? Is this model a realistic model? I can make all kinds of changes. I can change the number of agents. I can change the percentage of the poor person's wealth that we give back and forth. Remember, it's all random. Who gets, the, who gets more wealth and who loses is a random thing. Okay? I could change the distribution a little bit, like sometimes we give uh, 3%, sometimes 5%. Could do all kinds of things like that. And in any case, all those cases, the same thing happens. One person gets everything. So this isn't quite what we see in reality, but it does tell us that in a system of economic transactions under a kind of capitalist type system, it is inevitable that there will be wealth inequality. That is natural. It's not an unnatural thing. It's not something that depends on historical facts or anything. It's going to happen. The question is how to stop it. How can we change that? So let's think about it. What do you do? What you do is you have to have taxes. All right? So we're going to consider how taxes affect wealth inequality. But actually, the nature of the taxes is not the whole story. It's what you do with the tax revenue that's important. So we're going to consider two extremes. One extreme, the first case is we're going to do, is where the tax revenue is given proportionally to your wealth. So if you're wealthier, you get more. If you're poor, you get less. Now you might say, that's ridiculous. What government would do that? Well, you're, look, you're in the government that does that. All right. Almost every government does that. For example, in a recent New York Times article, the Corporation for Enter Enterprise Development did a study and found that of $390 billion of subsidies for education and housing and other things, 95 billion went to the top 1% and only 90 billion went to the bottom 80%. Or just consider all those other subsidies that go to agribusiness, to oil companies. Who are they benefiting? Or even just consider what the government does in its normal operations, such as the military and security. True, they are securing our personal lives, but they're also securing property. And how often do you hear that we're going to war to secure our economic interests? Whose economic interests are they securing? It's mostly the wealth. So it is not surprising, it is not unusual, that the wealth should go back to the wealthy, the tax revenue. So let's see what happens. We're going to look at three kinds of taxes. The first kind is a tax on every transaction. It's like a profit tax, sort of like a sales tax, but really a profit tax. All right? So we're going to run this thing. It's a flat rate. Let's see what happens. All right? So you see? You get a situation that's more or less the same. The bottom has nothing. One person gets everything. So just doing a flat tax on a transaction, if you distribute it proportionally, doesn't help. In fact, it might even make it worse. All right, let's look at a different kind of tax, income tax. What an income tax is, is a tax basically on the change in wealth. So we measure the change in wealth, 
And in this case, we're going to do a progressive income tax. The highest rate is 30% if you have over $50,000. And if you have less than $10,000, there's no tax at all. Let's see what happens here. Again, it's more or less the same kind of deal. All right, one person gets all the wealth. Notice it's not always the same person. It's completely random who gets it. All right, now we're going to look at another kind of tax, one that's not too common in the United States. It's a direct tax on wealth. And we're also going to use a progressive tax. All right, in this tax, the highest rate is 3% for people making, having over $500,000 in wealth. And if you have under 100000 there's no tax. Right? But again, remember, it's a proportional uh, rebate of the tax. Here's something new happens. It seems like there's two groups of people. The bottom 40% has almost nothing, just like before. But the top 60% seem to have something. Right? It's distributed somewhere. So this simple model actually produced a two-class society, just like that. All right? No big inputs, no historical facts, just a simple model. All right, so that's the proportional way of doing it. The other extreme is to collect the taxes and then just evenly distribute it, the revenue. Okay? Do we do that? Not really, but we do it to some degree in the sense that we get uh, maybe free, uh, free education, public education, and roads, and uh, health care, and things of that sort. So generally, Revenue does not go directly into your own pocket, but goes into services in, in terms of direct. So let's see what happens here. We're going to go through the same uh, different taxes. The profit tax is first. And now if you look at this case, it is a little different. Okay? The bottom person has some wealth, actually a few thousand dollars. And the top person only has... Uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, a few hundred thousand dollars. The difference between the top and the bottom in this case is of a few hundred, which is fantastic. If we had a country where the wealthiest person only had a, a few hundred times more than the poorest, we would be static, okay, if that happened. All right, let's look at the other kinds of taxes, income tax. We'll do the same thing. Same thing happens. This actually turns out to be a little worse. It's about it. the difference between the top and the bottom is about 1,000 times. And finally, we do a wealth tax. The wealth tax is the best. Uh, in this case, the difference between the top and the bottom is about a factor of 50, something of that order. Okay? So what's the message? The message here is that it's not, it's not the tax rate. It's not what kinds of taxes you have, taxing the rich or the poor or whatever you do. It's what you do with the taxes that matters. That's what we should be pressuring our politicians to think more closely about. Because if we do that, then we have a better chance of redressing wealth inequality. All right? And the best tax is a tax on wealth. That is the best way of doing it. And that includes all wealth. Now, this isn't a completely idiotic idea. All right? Uh, Thomas Piketty, a French economist, wrote the book in 2010 called Capital in the 21st Century. And he concluded, after poring over reams and reams of data and doing all kinds of calculations and statistical analysis, that the best thing to do would be a global tax on wealth. Why global? So you can't hide. All right, that's the reason. So these ideas are uh, pretty, pretty obvious as to what can be done. Now, Piketty knows no government's going to do it, and certainly not going to get the world to do this, all right? But by presenting the ideas, he can push people to see where the real issues are. And it is true, he did not talk a lot in his book about how that revenue was distributed, which I think is more important than the actual rate of tax. Okay, so what are the lessons today? What do I hope you'll bring out, bring home with you? What do I hope you'll do? Well, the lesson is wealth inequality is inevitable. It's going to happen. Second, the only way to stop it, to make it better, is through taxes. 
And the most important issue is not what, how you tax, but how you distribute the tax revenue that you get. That's what's going to matter. All right? So change your conversations in the future and stop arguing about those tax rates and start arguing about what to do with the taxes. Okay. Here are my acknowledgments to the people that I've talked to about this, a number of other uh, people who've worked with me on various simulations. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>